Thank you so much, Amy. This is, as you know, Matt Connect hands on and what's new. So because it's hands on today, uh, there are activities for you to participate in. So if you're able, by all means, please participate with us. If you're not though, you don't have a Matt Connect or you're unable to do some of the activities, don't worry, we're gonna be letting you know how all this is done. The presenters are gonna go through step by step what to do. So you'll still be able to learn the activities and be able to do them on your own time. Uh, our time today, we'll start with our introductions. We'll get into our objectives. Uh, what are the new features coming up in Matt Connect? We're gonna find that out today. And then we'll work on our hands-on activities. Uh, we'll learn how to capture a document. We'll import and edit a PDF document and then complete some different academic tasks. Uh, definitely make sure you put your questions in the chat for us. Obviously we'll have our ACV REP credit. That code has already been put in. So let's, let's get to our presenters. Eric Beauchamp from Humanware, uh, Director of uh, Product Management. Uh, if you've been on Matt Connect webinars before, you've heard Eric. Glad to have him back with us today. And then a new name, yes. Eric Chasse. Uh, he is also with Humanware, the project manager uh, for Low Vision. Uh, welcome, Eric. Thanks for joining us today and thanks, thanks for, for being me. a presenter. Thank you. And our objectives. So we'll list three essential steps to edit a captured document. Uh, we'll explain to you how to import and edit a PDF file. We'll talk about how to complete three academic tasks uh, with at least three features of the Mat Connect. And with that, before we turn it over to our presenters, Amy has a fun question, our Friday fun question. So Amy, if you want to go ahead and put that out and tell everybody what that question is. Absolutely. I am glad. I'm excited to launch it. This is a fun question for Friday. Uh, what are the best beaches in the world? That's what we have on our brains today. And the best beaches of the world, are they found in Florida, California, the Bahamas, Cuba? How about Mexico um, or Bora Bora? Where do you find as being the best beaches? Now, I know we have more people that can report. We have about 19 out of 60 reporting. We really want your voice to be heard. All right, I'm gonna go ahead with that at just a little under 50% or 50% reporting. And I'm gonna share out results. And so Paul, we have the, the, they have spoke. Bahamas, 33% feel that the Bahamas are the best beaches, but Pretty close behind our other ones, such as the beaches of Florida and so forth. So that was fun. All right, so we can be go ahead and Eric, you want to start? Uh, get us started now. Sure. <laughs> uh, welcome, hello, and I'm happy again to be here for another wonderful uh, APH uh, Matt Connect webinar. So uh, today's little webinar is a bit different than what uh, we're used to do. Uh, I'm going to be asking for some particip participation from you guys uh, because all we, we know that practice makes better and uh, I think at the links that were shared in the, in the chat or also that were available from the APH uh, website are a couple of files that I, I'd like to go through with you. So the first one is the is some basic additions. So I printed them out all here uh, just to show you and I'll show you how to capture, import, or even convert from a Word or a PDF document. So you got the basic additions. You have also another uh, file which is called uh, butterfly coloring. Uh, so we'll do a bit of coloring depending on the age of your students. Uh, that would be a great activity. And we have also a little story that everybody knows uh, the little red riding hood. So if you if you're able to download this and if you're able to 
to maybe print out the little uh, red writing hood and maybe the basic edition. And um, because we're gonna start off with uh, doing some live manual uh, task uh, using the Mac Connect. So I'm just gonna switch here to my, um, the webcam that's gonna show you my Mac Connect and how I'm set up. Because there's a couple of things that I wanna go through uh, before using the Mad Connect. And, and it's, it's something that uh, should be done uh, before the student uses the Mad Connect for the first time. So I set up how to set it up. So I have mine really opened up uh, with the stand. The, the screen is uh, tilted a bit. And to do manual task, what I like to do and what I suggest is maybe have a smaller pencil. So you just uh, keep those small pencils. It's gonna be useful to write underneath uh, where the camera is. That's one of the questions that I get a lot. How can I write? Because there's not enough space sometimes in between for depending on the, on the age of the student where the student has to really incline that screen and there's not a lot of space underneath. I'll show you several ways on uh, maybe uh, solving that issue. So one of the way is using smaller pencils here. And another way is to capture and edit the document using the Mad Connect. What I like to do also is, you see I have some green tape here right on my base. On my, uh, I've put it on my left hand side. So this is really the corner where I'm gonna place my, the corner of the sheet when I do a capturing of a document. So I can feel, uh, I can feel around where is my corner, my top left corner. And this is gonna enable us to uh, guide or enable the student to guide himself or where to put the, uh, the sheet and have a full page capture using the Mad Connect. Okay, so that's how I, I like to use it. That's how I teach how to use it. Um, and then I'm just gonna change my view here so that you can see on the screen because, oh, one last thing before we move from uh, the front of the screen is that when I do a capture, a full page document, uh, I have to lift the screen up to about a 90 degree angle. The student does not have to use the Mad Connect in this manner, just when he has to capture a full page capture. And this is where the tape comes into a uh, necessary where to place your page. Once you've captured the document, then you can lower that screen down and have it, have it well positioned uh, ergonomically um, for the student, okay? So I'm gonna move my camera here a bit so that I'm in front of my Mad Connect and I'm gonna start my Mad Connect. There we go. So we're in Prodigy right now. I have the magnifier application on my screen. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna start my magnifier application. I should have shown you a bit I'm jumping here a bit, but I'm gonna show you which version of uh, software I'm using. Uh, if you go into system about, you'll see that Prodigy right now that I'm using is Prodigy 4.3.0. And uh, this is the Prodigy version that is uh, available right now as a release version. We, uh, in the agenda, I was, I was supposed to talk a bit about the new features that are coming up. I wanted to show them to you today, but unfortunately the version is not ready, but it's coming out in a couple of weeks. Don't worry, it's coming. So I just, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the new features that are coming for Prodigy 4.3, uh, 4.4, sorry. And uh, these features are, first of all, we're gonna have the possibility you have of um, self, uh, um, an option of self viewing. So in the magnifier, you'll have an option to be able to use the front facing camera, which is at the bottom here, to self view ourselves. So to do some grooming or uh, some things like that. That was something that was asked a lot of the time. There's also now an option to uh, disable the OCR. So what is the OCR? The OCR is optical character recognition and uh, it detects the characters that are on a page. So you'll have that option of turning that off so you don't need to um, have that uh, those characters replaced on the page for you. And also one of the big uh, addition that, or big feature that we'll have in uh, Prodigy 4.4 uh, is the access 
to different uh, virtual libraries. So I'm thinking here I had somebody from Canada. So I'm, off the top of my head, you'll be able to connect to the Sela library in Canada. So using a username and password. And there's all kinds of other libraries that we're, we'll be able to support all around the world and uh, people will have access to that. So this is coming up in the next months or so. So uh, keep in touch, it's a free update. You, to update, you're either gonna have a pop-up if you're connected to the Wi-Fi or in settings system, which is the third uh, option at the, at the bottom, you'll have an option here called software update. Software update will automatically or manually uh, download the update and install it for you. So again, it's a free update. So back to our hands-on. So we're gonna start our magnifier application and right now I'm positioned to see what I have here as equations, my first uh, equations here. Right now, if I look at this screen, as you can see, it's slanted a bit. The reason why it's slanted is because my screen here is at an angle and, and, and the computer or the, uh, the tablet uh, repositions uh, the image so that all the letters and all the numbers are straight and not, and not have that, I call it a Star Wars effect where it, because the screen is at an angle, you have that angle when you read the, the screen. So Prodigy really, um, there's an algorithm that puts everything straight for you. If you don't like those angles, there's a way of, uh, of turning those off by going into settings. And again, this can be done before giving the Mac Connect to a student. And in settings, you have angle correction. You just tap on angle correction, and this will disable the, uh, the, uh, the algorithm that uh, uh, puts everything straight for you. So now you see the difference. I have kind of like a Star Wars effect going in the back, but I, I have a full screen, so that's one of the advantage, but you have a disadvantage of having that slanted um, uh, text on there. So uh, I don't know who's gonna be monitoring uh, the, the chat there, but I see a lot going on in the chat. So please, if, uh, if there's a question that has to be answered while I'm talking, just interrupt me and, uh, and I can answer the questions. And again, all the questions, type it in the chat and uh, we'll try to address them. All right, so as you can see here, so I turned off my angle correction, I have a full screen. So what I wanna do, as, I, as you notice, there is a kind of like a, a, an autofocus that it's done, that, that is being done. So to turn that off, you can just, uh, just double tap on the screen. And you have this icon on the top uh, right corner uh, called AF with a bar on it. So AF means autofocus. So you won't have that jumping around all the time. So it's a simple gesture, just double tap really quickly on the screen and that will turn off the auto the autofocus. So again, when using my little, my small pencil, I can put my hand underneath here and I can start writing here uh, the answer. So six plus four is 10. So please follow me if you're able to, if you've been able to print um, this exercise, basic edition, and, uh, and try doing the same thing that I'm doing here. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please use the chat and tell me uh, that I'm going too fast and I'm gonna to try to slow down. And so again, I have, uh, I can answer seven uh, plus nine, uh, which is uh, 16. So I can, again, using my small little pencil, this is all live. And because I've turned off the autofocus, I don't have that jumping around with the focus. And it's very easy for me to answer the questions with a pen, with a pencil. So let's try um, let's say if the teacher, um, if, you're, if you're explaining one of the equations, let's say if we're explaining what the six plus four is on the blackboard. Well, what you can do is uh, as a student, we can turn on and use the distance camera and have a split screen with this. And how that works is to go back into my main carousel here, scroll to distance, but before tapping here, I'm just gonna press on my camera here. I'm gonna, just gonna show you the camera, the distance viewing camera is right here. So on the top, there is a button. You can press on that. It's gonna turn on the distance camera. Once your distance camera is on, I can tap on the distance application. 
And the um, distance camera is connected through Wi-Fi, so there is no um, cables connected to it. It's uh, so that's that's very nice because what the student can use it on the Mac Connect, connect it to the Mac Connect like this, or I can take the camera and put it somewhere else in the class, and have the camera there at that place, and 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 I and I can use it on the Mac Connect. So I hope that everybody that is following went into the distance camera, got the distance camera going. And as you can see, I got two equations there on, there on the board, my simulated board that I have here. So once I have that, the camera connected, I can zoom in using a pinch and zoom. But what I prefer is using the buttons here, the plus and the minus. So if I press and hold on the plus button, it's going to gradually zoom in for me on those equations that I have written on my blackboard. Okay, and uh, as, as I was mentioning, there is a split screen feature that can be used uh, with a distance. And that split screen is using this little arrow, which is on the uh, left hand side of the screen. If you press on that, the screen will be divided into two. So I have at the bottom my magnifier application and on the top I have my distance application. So I can, I'm just going to adjust here. Uh, my distance viewing. If I want to control my distance viewing, I just tap on my top part of the screen and I will, and I just lost my camera. I lost my signal. Okay, so that doesn't matter. I'm gonna, my camera just turned off, so that's why here. I'm just going to turn it back on, go back into my distance application. And we're back on. So I'm going to go back to my split screen. And uh, I have my magnifier at the bottom. So now I can follow as a teacher is, is uh, explaining the equation, what is seven plus nine. I had already answered my answer right here, but I can follow along on the top part. If I want to go directly to my magnifier, I just tap to select it. And I have that red rectangle around it and tap again, and I'll be brought automatically to my magnifier. Um, another way to edit a document uh, instead of using um, live uh, a pencil like I'm doing right now is to capture the document. So let's try this. Uh, this is my preferred way of editing a document. And again, the Mac Connect has been uh, designed to do exactly what I'm going to show you, to capture a document and have it edited on the device. And we'll finish this assignment uh, together using uh, the, edit, uh, edit, um, the annotation uh, mode in the Mac Connect. So what I want to do, I'm going to bring that screen up okay, to a 90 degree as the position that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm just going to lift it so you can see here a bit uh, it's at the 90 degree angle and I'm going to use my tape that I've put on my base here to know where my, my corner, my top uh, left corner is going to line up. When I line it up, that means I have a full page on my screen. Um, as an adult, you can maybe see what's on the screen and you can confirm that you have a full screen. If you don't have a full screen, just zoom out using a pinch and zoom or using the minus button on the button banner. So once I have my full screen, just press and hold on the document. Once the lights turn off, I can, uh, I, I can directly or automatically bring down my screen. And right now I have my, uh, the OCR that's done on my document. Again, if you're having problems with uh, following uh, or with uh, trying these tasks, just write P in the chat and we'll try to troubleshoot with you. So right now the OCR, the optical character recognition, tried to detect the uh, text as the, that is uh, on my sheet. It's not very good with math. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one finger here, okay? And on the right hand side of the screen, on the side there, I'm gonna swipe from down to bottom. By doing that, you'll see I'm gonna go from positive, negative, and then there's going to be one for color.
color means that there's no more OCR or the OCR result won't uh, be on, uh, on the captured document. So I see here, uh, I, someone is uh, asking or having problems with uh, not being able to get a full page. So let me back up here. What you want to do, again, is to place the, your tablet at a 90 degree angle. So if I move my camera here to the side, so this is how you want to place the Mat Connect at about a 90 degree angle. And then on the top, what you see, what you're supposed to see, something like this here. And then if you don't see a full page, what you can do is hit that minus button and it's gonna fall into a full page. It should take an eight, eight and a half by uh, eight by eight, uh, 11 and a half page. Uh, and then once you have that full page, as you can see here on my screen, just press and hold on the screen and it's gonna take automatically the picture or the capture. So I hope it helps. Okay, I'm gonna bring down my screen and my camera at the same time. Once you have that capture, again, I'm gonna do the gesture, one finger on the uh, right hand side of the screen. Just toggle from one to the other. So you do that gesture three times to go to color and you won't have that OCR or that the characters replaced by a vectorial text or computer uh, font. Okay, so let's finish this um, example. Good, so we resolved one problem. Good job. <laughs> All right, so now we have our captured document. What you want to do is save the document. So the third button from the right is a little diskette with a pencil. So you just tap on that. By tapping on that third button on the button banner, it will save automatically that image. And uh, you can notice that the icon on that button has changed to a pencil. So by tapping on the pencil, you enter automatically in your annotation uh, mode. So what that means is that we can finish our exercise on the screen. So I don't need the paper anymore, okay, because I did the capture and I have everything in my Mac Connect and it's stored in my gallery automatically when I click on the diskette button. So I can use either my finger to finish this assignment or I can use various stylus. Um, let's see here if I can show you the different stylus here. Let's get a better uh, lighting. Uh, so I have several ones. Uh, you can have one with a rubber tip. Um, that, that you can get. Uh, it's easier to use because it, it's, it has a, um, a wider or larger head. Uh, so the screen will detect it uh, more easily. But you can also use, there's other tips that exist. So I have one here, which is a, a mesh tip that works also. And it's as wide as the uh, rubber tip and that detects it really nicely. If you wanna go smaller, there's some other, this one has both here. On one side, there's a smaller tip that you can use. Um, this could happen that it does not detect, uh, but I would say if I use this one here, uh, it's really small and nice, comfortable also for writing. It, it detects it 95% of the time. So, But it could happen that it does not detect just because the surface of that uh, stylus that detects it on the screen is a bit, uh, is a, is a bit thin. Okay, so a wider surface for a stylus is better. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my rubber one, which is my preferred one. So I'm just gonna bring back here, front of here. And as I was, t uh, as I was uh, saying, you are in the uh, annotation mode. To hide this button banner at the bottom to have more space, you can just swipe on the side here uh, on the button banner and it will hide that button banner. So let's zoom in using a pinch and zoom. So I'm gonna zoom in and in my annotation uh, mode to pan in my document is two fingers because if I, if I only use one finger, then what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna start writing. So for example, 
seven plus eight, that means 15. So if I just use one finger, it's gonna start writing on the screen. But to pan, it is gonna be two finger. Okay, it's a bit like using um, Google Maps. That's what I have in my head right now, but Google Maps works the same way where I can move inside the image with using two fingers and I can pinch and zoom also at the same time. So it's kind of same, the same way. So here, I use my finger to rate my one. I can use my stylus here to uh, rate my five here. And I have my answer. Again, so eight plus uh, six, 14. And this, I'm, I'm writing in black right now, but we'll see with the coloring sheet uh, coming and then which is gonna be my next exercise, we'll be able to color in different colors. So I did my first roll, so I'm gonna use my two fingers here to pan. I can use two fingers, pinch and zoom, to zoom in. And uh, nine plus eight, 17. Two plus three. So I'm very good in math right now. So uh, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. So these are pretty basic additions or uh, math. Um, I hope you're following along and you're not having any problems here. Uh, but basically you can finish all the equations and then if you want to save, the only thing you have to do, since we hit in the button banner right now, if you have a little problem here, how do you erase when you make a mistake and forget to use the two fingers? Good question. I love that question. I'm going to zoom back in here. Okay. Let's say I want to erase the six, my answer. I'm going to go back to my button banner, tap on that little arrow at the bottom. And then the third button from the left is an eraser button. So tap on that and then just go on the screen with your finger and it's going to erase on top. You have to be on top of the marking or the mistake that you did. Okay. And once you're done erasing, just tap again on that eraser and everything's going to come back. Okay. So for example, if I, Forgot that panning is in two fingers. I'm going to do a panning in one finger. Oops, been a mistake. Get that button banner back. Click on the eraser button, which is the third button, then go over that mistake with that red dot that's on the screen. And it will erase uh, your error. Once you're done, tap on the eraser button again. Hope that helps. I'm loving this. That means uh, some people are following and they're trying it out. And this is great. All right, so let's move on. Do we want to insert our poll question here, maybe? It'd be a good time for that. Sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, I'm just going to just finish uh, because now we've answered our first uh, assignment. If you hit the back button, the first button on the left on the button banner, it's going to be saved automatically. You don't have to hit another button or whatsoever. Just do the, uh, just do the back button. All right. So now we've saved everything. So now we're ready for a poll question. Amy, whenever you're ready, you can put that in there for us. All right. Let's get that long. So our question that is now on the screen that you should see is how many nerve cells can we find in a typical optic nerve? 1,000, uh, 50,000, 100,000, or over 1 million? If you're not able to access this survey, please feel free just to put it in the chat box as well with your answer. So how many nerve cells can we find in a typical optic nerve? And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the polling with 44% reporting and 69% uh, of our audience today report uh, indicate over 1 million. Anyone have a commentary on sharing if they got the answer right? It is the right answer. Over 1 million nerve cells. You got it. <laughs> Good. We got we got good people here. <laughs> they know <Yeah>. their stuff. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, very quickly, there was uh, somebody that uh, wanted to go through again how to take a capture, 
And then, uh, yes, the presentation will be available uh, afterwards. So it, this presentation is recorded. Okay, so very quickly, uh, how to capture a document, and then we'll move on. Um, I'm gonna go back to uh, main, the, my main carousel here. Just gonna close my poll window here because I'm, there we go. So I will go to what you wanna do very quickly, and it's a good summary, it's a good uh, wrap up. Uh, magnify your application, bring your tablet at a 90 degree angle. Okay. Again, I'm gonna move my camera so that you can see how my Mat Connect is. So as you can see, I move this table here at about a 90 degree angle from the stand. It vibrates a bit. Uh, it's not, not very um, hard, but it, it will vibrate a bit. So you'll know that it, it is at a 90 degree angle. You place your page on a horizontal um, manner or fashion. And then your top corner, as I said, goes out where my tape, where I place my tape, or you can just place your, your document here, your page, and then on the top here, press on the minus button. So what I'll do here, I'm going to do like last time, I'm going to take my camera here. So I don't see a full page. As you can see, my equations are cut off. So what I want to do, I want to press the minus button and I'm going to get into full page mode. It's going to tell you that it's in full page. Then just press and hold, just put a finger on the screen, keep it there until the lights turn off and the capture is taken. We've taken a capture. Okay. Then I can, once the lights are turned off, I can um, bring down the screen. And then to go into the annotation uh, mode, what you want to do, the cap, the, here's my captured the document. Just press or tap on the, the sketch, uh, the third button from the left on the button banner. It's saved. And now I have a button or the button has changed. The third button has changed to a pencil. Just tap on the, on the pencil and you're in your annotation mode. Okay, good. So I'm just going to go back uh, here. If you, if you want to get the, uh, or uh, go back to the exercise we were doing, because I had a couple of answers uh, written down in my, um, in, my, in my assignment. You go out to my, your main gallery, your carousel, go into gallery. And like I was saying is that it's saved automatically. Your work is already saved in the gallery. So you can tap on where your work is. Again, it showed me uh, some um, OCR or a computer font. So again, that same gesture, just swipe from top to bottom and it's gonna take out those computer fonts out. And this is my assignment that I was working on. So my last uh, number that I just wrote or my last equation that I did was two plus three. So let's say uh, my, I finished my equation, I finished my exercise, and I'd like to share this, uh, my homework or my assignment with the teacher. So there's several ways to do that. Uh, you go back to my gallery, okay? And you can press and hold on the document or the, uh, uh, the assignment that you have in the gallery. And when you press and hold on one page, let me do this again because I did it a bit quickly. For those of you who are still in the magnifier, just come out of the magnifier by hitting the back button at the, at the bottom there on the button banner. There's a, the last button is the back button. Then scroll using a finger to your gallery. In the gallery, you see that your assignment that we've just worked on. Put a finger on your assignment for a couple of seconds and it will just uh, show up with a menu. In this menu, these are all the actions you can do on this document. But the first option on the top is share. So if I tap on share, it's gonna ask me, I wanna share it how, in which format, PDF, JPEG, or text. So I always use PDF because this is a, a PDF is, a, is very useful. So PDF, and then there's different ways of sharing your information. Depending on what you have installed on your Mac Connect, Again, the Mac Connect is an Android-based uh, tablet, so you can go and get any kind of uh, Android application on the Google Store. Here I have my Gmail account. I have my Google Drive account. I, I even have a Dropbox account. So I can share my work through
through all these application. So for example, if I want to uh, send it by email, just tap on the Gmail, my Gmail application will show up and then I can just send it to whoever I need to. I, this again, this is the Gmail account, my Gmail application. So I write the email and do the send. Or if I'd like, if I'm using, for example, Classroom, and I want to share it through the Google Drive that, that is connected to the Classroom, then just select the Google Drive and the Google Drive application will load up and it will share uh, it will share that information on the Google Drive. Okay. So this is one way of, uh, of processing a, an assignment. So we've seen two ways right now. So one is in, in live mode using a pencil. One is capturing a document and editing it using the annotation mode. There is a, a third way of importing, uh, of, of capturing or getting your information or getting your, 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 um, your assignment is to import your assignment. So for example, what you can do is I'm gonna do this for the next exercise, which is gonna be the butterfly exercise. Um, you can share a PDF with your student. So let's say uh, the Mac Connect is connected, well, not, let's say my Mac Connect is connected to a Google Drive and, uh, and then the teacher can place uh, documents in my Google Drive. So what I wanna do is on the Mac Connect, you can go into your APH toolbox. And then usually there's, a, there's several applications that are installed there, but you can, you can choose an application and add your Dropbox or, or uh, Google, Google Drive. So what I'm gonna do is Google Drive there. I'm gonna go into Google and then I'm gonna add my Google Drive to uh, my, um, my APH toolbox. If I don't have it and if I don't want it in my APH toolbox, I can go into Android directly and go get my Google Drive. And to go into Android, just use five fingers and press it on the screen and hold it there and you're out into Android. And in Android, there is in the middle of the screen, there is a white circle with um, six little black dots. So if I, if I, uh, I won't do it, it's too bright. So it's the one in the middle here. I'm gonna press on that. That's gonna be my list of all applications that are installed on my Mac Connect. And there's one which is called Drive. I'm gonna tap on that one. And uh, for those of you who have a, um, a, a, a Google Drive connected to their Mac Connect right now, um, uh, please tell me if you need more time in order to upload your document and try this out. But upload your document to your video. Google, into your Google Drive. And then in Google Drive, what I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna, just gonna go into my folders view. And I have a folder here in PDFs. I'm gonna look for my PDF that I want. So my PDF is right here. And what I want to do, I'm gonna put it a bit closer here so that you can see. There is uh, three buttons right beside the name of the, uh, of the document. So what you wanna do, tap on those three buttons. And then in the pop-up, you scroll in the pop-up and you wanna select open with, which is this one here open with and then there's an option you can use it you can use prodigy or you can use others but i prefer using prodigy i'm just going to select uh, just once for now because i'm always doing presentation and i want to show you i want to show this pop-up uh, but you can select always and each time you're going to open a pdf next time it's going to use prodigy automatically so i'm just going to select just one for now and what it's going to do it's going to convert my pdf into a Prodigy style document. And it's gonna import it directly and save it directly in my gallery. And this is where my document is, okay? So I'm looking at the, um, okay, so we got that answered. Okay, good. So I have my, my next assignment, which is the butterfly assignment. Uh, and then I can tap on my butterfly assignment again I can start editing my butterfly assignment, which is, a, is coloring really, it's a coloring uh, assignment. 
what you want to do again is the third button from the left is a pencil button tap on that pencil button and then you're brought into my into your annotation uh, application or mode so what you want to do i'm going to zoom in here and then pan into using two fingers and i'm going to see here in my legend so i got uh, so number one is brown number two is orange number three is blue number four is yellow and number five is green so let's start here by coloring this map. I have uh, three fives here, which I'm gonna start coloring in green. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna get my button banner by tapping on my arrow. And inside that button banner, there's several uh, buttons that I can use. I'm gonna go in the color palette uh, button. And the color palette is the one, two, three, fourth button from the left, tap on that and you have all kinds of different colors. So this exercise I love because you can, you can have young students just coloring using the Matte Connect. Uh, and I'm gonna choose green, there we go. And I'm just gonna zoom in a bit more here. I'm gonna start coloring uh, this part here. Uh, and then if I just start coloring with my finger, see it's, it's gonna take me a while because it's, it's really thin. But what you can do is again, in the button banner, the fifth button from the left, you can change the thickness of what you're writing. Oh, oops, I went a bit too fast here, but I'm gonna choose that thickness. And then there's several thick, thickness to the pen. So I had, uh, usually it's, in, it's at thin, it's set to thin as default. So you can choose medium, wide, very wide, etc. So I'm gonna try very wide for this example. So once you've selected very, uh, very wide, wide it's here you're going to be brought back to your document. And then you can start again coloring that section. And uh, the student can really use your, their finger or again the stylus. Let me use a different stylus. Last time I used the uh, rubber one. Uh, let's use the mesh one. So again, this on the screen and you can really have some fun here. Not only math and reading at school, but also art that you can do using the Matte Connect. Uh, so very vert vertile uh, device. Uh, you can do some math, you can do some reading, you can do some coloring. So all your uh, subjects for the student. And then I'm just gonna finish this section here. But you get, you get the, um, the principle here. It's like watching Bob Ross painting on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so soothing. <laughs> Are we good with all the questions? Uh, uh, what if the assignment isn't a PDF, but rather a Google Doc or Google Sheet? Can we still import into the Prodigy software? Very good question. Um, that brings me up to another topic here, which uh, I would love to uh, show to you, is uh, if Prodigy right now only supports PDF. Let's say, for example, we have a Google Doc or a worksheet, and, uh, and then you want to import this into, um, into Prodigy. You need to convert it to PDF. There's several uh, methods to convert into PDF, but I'd like to show you one where we're going to convert, uh, where, where we're going to convert a, do, a docx document to a PDF. So what I'm going to do, I will share my screen because I, I want to show you a, an, a, a, a online application. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, so it's called online-convert.com. And I love this site because it's a, free, uh, it's a free site and you can convert documents as you can see here. And you can select a format. So you, you want to convert to a PDF. So I'm just gonna select convert to PDF. And then I'm gonna select go. And here, I'm just gonna have, I just need to go and choose the file that I want to convert. So I can just choose it through here or I can just drop my file. So I have here, little red writing hood in a docx format. So I'm gonna drop it in here. It's gonna, it uploaded it and then I'm gonna start the conversion. It's processing it. Once it's gonna be finished, you will be able to download that document as a PDF. 
There we go. So I, I can download directly uh, the PDF or open it. So let's open it so I can just, so we can see the result. And here I have my document that has been converted into a PDF. Once it's converted to a PDF, just put that PDF in your Google Drive and then on the Mac Connect, go to that Google Drive. Or maybe if you want, you can send it also by email. You can send the PDF by email and, uh, and, and then the student can go in their email uh, and uh, open it as an attachment and then import it into Prodigy. So I hope that answers um, that question. So any type of document uh, that you have, you can convert to a PDF. Like I said, there is uh, several ways of doing this. And uh, your preferred way, you can use your preferred way. I just showed you one here where you can convert a docx document and then to a PDF, and then you can import it to a, uh, uh, into Prodigy. And in this example, it's a nice short story. There's a couple of pages and we'll uh, import uh, that uh, in our third, uh, in our third example here, or fourth example here. Uh, yeah, sure, we can go to a poll. Uh, we have, I think we have another poll. We have one left, Amy, if you want to drop that in. We do. Let me up here. And our last poll for today for, because it's such a fun Friday, is what is the most common eye color? What's the most common eye color? Blue, uh, green, brown, or gray? Those are the choices. If you're not able to access the poll, please feel free to uh, put your answer in the chat box. We can see that there. Um, so we have a resounding 88% plus people in the chat that are putting the word brown. So I'm gonna stop there and I will share so that you can see uh, the results that it was brown. A few people said uh, blue, no one said green, and no one <laughs> said gray. Brown was the right answer. 79% of the population have brown eyes. I feel special now. I have gray, <laughs> <laughs> so I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, so we were coloring again, fun, fun Friday. <laughs> hmm. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that people are following. I'm hoping that uh, if you have any problems or something like that, just type P or type in your problem and we'll try to solve it. Uh, we're here for this. It's a hands-on. Uh, I just have a feeling that I'm going a bit too fast. If not, uh, that's great. If so, please put it in the chat and, uh, and I'll slow down a bit. Okay, so we were in coloring again. Uh, I'm not going to do this, uh, the whole picture, uh, but again, you see the, um, the example. So I've, what I've showed you in the annotation um, uh, application or mode is that you can choose different colors using the color palette. And you can choose also several um, width for the pen, which uh, can be very useful. And we saw also the eraser and we saw the pen, how to fill in the assignment. So there's uh, another thing that uh, is left in the annotation uh, mode is to highlight. So what I'm gonna do next is that I will go and get my uh, little red writing hood uh, document that I've converted to PDF. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did for this butterfly assignment. I will go into Android, so four finger or five finger, press and hold, go into my Google Drive, and then I will find my document, which is this one here, and I'm going to tap on that little, um, those, those three little dots. Again, that could be something that is very hard to find for a visually impaired person. And I'm, I'm not sure if I have uh, this activated, but I'll try it out anyways. But if it's not, I'll show you how to activate it. There's a couple of nice features in Android that you can activate for accessibility. And one of them is the magnification gesture. So if the magnification gesture is uh, enabled, you can triple tap on the screen. And nope, I don't have it installed, but I'll show you how to do this. Just gonna jump here. I'm gonna do a little parenthesis here. I will go 
back to Android and then select settings and into settings. I will find accessibility and what you want to activate all the time for your students is the magnification gestures. Tap on that and there is a little checkbox on the top here. Just tap on it until it becomes green and then that enables us to do three taps and it's going to magnify whatever is on the screen and it can use a pinch and zoom to magnify more. So that's how you're going to find your student is going to find those three dots to import uh, the document. So let's go back to our Google Drive and import our document. So if I want to see it bigger, I'm going to put it a bit bigger and I can even zoom in more. Now I can see my dots. And again, two finger, two finger uh, to pan and then I'm going to select those three dots, triple tap to unzoom and if I want, I can triple tap again, or I can just scroll to open with. And if you selected always last time, it's always, it's gonna open it automatically to Prodigy. In my case, I'm not doing this, uh, just because I'm doing a lot of presentation and I wanna show this pop-up to um, the people I'm doing the presentation. But please uh, select the always, and each time there will open a PDF, it will open in, um, in, in, in Prodigy. Somebody opened the mic? No, are we good? Um, what was the website for the PDFs? It's called online-convert.com. Maybe here, can you just uh, type it into the chat? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you. All right, so coming back to our example, We've uh, imported uh, the PDF, so everything was converted to a Prodigy style format, and it's right here. It's an, in, a, in a folder, it's a special folder. It's, it's a book because there's several pages that were um, imported. So I'm gonna tap on that, and here's my book. Here's the document that I converted to a PDF uh, using my online-convert.com website. And uh, you see all the pages. I can't remember how many pages. There's gonna six pages. So in another tutorial, we'll see how we can navigate through a book if you have a lot of pages and things like that. But uh, I just want to finish uh, by showing you um, a, nice, uh, a nice feature in the annotation where we can highlight. Uh, so let's say uh, we're reading a book. We're going to tap on that first page. So I'm going to zoom in. Again, I don't know what I want to highlight in, the, in this little story, but uh, for an example, I will zoom in to my text here and I will select the pen to go into my annotation uh, mode. And again, I will tap on the pen, which is the second button on the left until I get this kind of pen, which is the highlighter. So it's a pen with a dash underneath it. And this highlight is set automatically, I think, to a, um, a yellow color. But basically what you can do is go over the text that you want to highlight, and it's gonna highlight that text for you. And that highlighter, you can change again the color, or you can change the width in the same manner that uh, we did for the pencil. Okay. Now, let's say I have in this page, I've highlighted uh, some text, but I have also written some notes. So I will just write note here just to give you an example. So let's say I have written some notes on the side of my document and I want to erase those notes. The way to do this, again, I'm just going to show you the procedure again, is go to the button banner and the third button from the left is the eraser button. Tap on that and then you can go on top of your note and it will erase what you've written, okay? Well, let's say I want to erase the highlight that I did on my text. And if I have the eraser with a pencil, it will not erase my highlight. To erase the highlight, what you need to do is to first, before selecting the eraser button, you tap on the 
pencil, you get the highlighter pencil on that button, then press the eraser. And I will be able to erase my highlight that I did on the text, but not my text. Okay. So what I'm going to erase is what I have configured when I was using my note, my notation mode. Okay. Okay. So one, one other thing, really cool feature for the, the annotation in doing some homework or assignments is uh, using a keyboard or this is a Bluetooth keyboard or using the virtual keyboard. Uh, I love this, uh, this feature because what I can do here is in a, in a school environment, what you can do in this book, I can add in the settings. Uh, yes, okay. So what I can do is that I can go and press and hold on one page here and I can insert a new page. And this will insert a blank page in my document that I just imported. And I can take notes. Or I can take notes on, on one of the pages of the book. But I love doing this because then I can do it like a summary or uh, some highlight notes uh, and, uh, on a blank page. So you just select the page that you want to write on. Again, go into the annotation mode. And here what you want to do, the second button, which is the pencil, just tap twice until you get the T on there. Press and hold wherever you want to write, and then a virtual keyboard will pop up if you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard connected. And then you can start writing your notes, your summary. You can put as much text as you want in uh, this interface. And then once you're ready or you're done, just press on that little paper airplane. It's gonna send it over to your document. You can press on that uh, on the letters or the notes that you've uh, entered. And then you'll see it's highlighted in red. And then you can zoom in that those notes. I can also move it around in my document to place it somewhere I want to. There you go. Okay. So these are several ways of uh, completing assignments, doing tasks in class. Um, you can split the screen with the distance camera and uh, and take notes at the same time manually uh, or import them and use them uh, virtually and basically your mat connect can become a paperless cctv and not have to carry around a lot of paper so i think uh, uh, we can open up the lines for questions i hope that you guys have followed and you were able to follow um, I can do a little summaries of what we had to do today as uh, objectives. So our first objectives was uh, to list the essential steps to edit a captured document. I think we pretty much did that, how we captured our math, um, uh, our math assignment, and then we edited that uh, math assignment. We have also, our second objective is to explain how to import and edit a PDF. We saw that by going into Google Drive clicking on those the three little buttons and importing it into Prodigy. And then the third our third objectives today was to complete at least three academic tasks and using at least three features on the Mad Connect. I think we did that. We did some math, we did a bit of reading, and we did a bit of coloring. Good. So I'm open for questions and uh, for helping people uh, trying out what we just did today. Great, this is Amy. And if I could just circle back on a real early on question uh, for a demonstration, if that would be okay. Someone wanted to just have uh, the panning. When you're panning using it explained one more time, would you be able to give a quick demo? For panning in the annotation uh, mode? It would have been at the very beginning so I, I believe okay. so. Okay, so yeah, sure. Uh, there's two ways of panning into an image. So if I go into an image, I'm going back into my art. When I zoom in and I'm not into the annotation part of things, I can pan in the image using one finger. Again, I'm not using the, uh, the annotation. So I can use one finger 
to pan. I'm not editing the document, okay? But if I'm editing the document, if I go into the pencil here, then the panning will be two finger on the screen, and then you can move around with two fingers on the screen. If I only use one finger, that will not pan, it's gonna write on it. Okay, so those are the, the two differences in the panning. That's great, that was a great um, demonstration, thank you. And if we could ask one other question that I still had uh, flagged to, to mention is this, will the Mac Connect ever be available with a bigger screen size? Schools would rather purchase um, from quota funds. Uh, larger Chromebooks are at uh, 15.6 inches, iPad Pro is 12.9, so forth. Um, so just wondering about that screen size. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why it, it, the Mac Connect is, at, is in this size, it's because it's a, an Android tablet and you can undock that tablet. If I just show you a bit here, I'm just gonna give you a bit of history and also I'm gonna explain something also. That so I can undock the tablet and it becomes really hands-on. I can connect to my Bookshare books, take only the tablet, go uh, somewhere else very comfortable and read uh, my books using only the tablet. I don't need to be on the stand to be using it. So this is the reason why it's at a 10 inch uh, screen. You have also the possibility of using the uh, device. Uh, here on the side, there's a couple of ports on the right hand side of the tablet. There is the headphone jack. There is a US, uh, no, this one's a HDMI port, a micro HDMI port. So there is a possibility of connecting a bigger screen to your Connect 12. So there is a possibility of having a, great, a bigger screen. So you can, you can imagine having your Mac Connect uh, on your docking station and then having a cable going to a bigger screen on the side of this. Then if I continue with the ports, you have uh, the power uh, to uh, recharge the tablet. You have a USB-C connector and you have also at the end here, a micro SD card. Now, this is the Mad Connect. I just wanna show very quickly, um, I know we're in the APH webinar, but at Humanware, there's a possibility of purchasing the Reveal 16i, which is this device that I have right beside me, which is a foldable 16 inch CCTV. And basically it is the big brother of the Mad Connect. It has the Prodigy. So everything that I just showed you can be done using the, uh, oh, I just turned it off. But using, <laughs> using, the, um, the, using the Prodigy, Prodigy is installed on the uh, Reveal 16i it's called. So it's a 16 inch screen. You can do the distance viewing, you can do the editing, uh, as we did with the Mac Connect, saving it, importing documents into it. So it's an all-in-one, but a bit bigger, and it folds up, and it comes with a nice carrying case also. So I'm not sure I was able, I'm, I'm, I was authorized to do that, but that's uh, kind of like another product or another options uh, for school. I hope that answers the, uh, the question. I believe it does. I think that it uh, shows uh, options that are available uh, that are there. Here is uh, another question that has just come up into the chat. I have a dual learner. She is learning both print and braille. Can we connect the Mac Connect onto a refreshable, bra refresher braille for uh, writing, for any writing purposes uh, using Bluetooth? Uh. Uh, uh, yes, you can uh, connect uh, a Braille reader. So I know that a Braille uh, device can be connected. I'm thinking here uh, kind of like uh, the Brilliant, uh, any of the Brilliant uh, at HumanWare can be connected. Uh, any Braille reader can be connected because it's an Android device. What you need to do though is to uh, download the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, Jim, would you have Are you thinking of Brailleback by any chance? Brailleback, thank you. Uh, you need to install that on your Android tablet so that your Braille reader works with it. But it should work. You should be able to read your Braille using that. 
Uh, I'm not sure about the writing part. Um, you, I'm guessing you want to input some Braille in, in that way. Uh, that I don't think will work uh, with the Mat Connect. But the reading part will work. At this time, I'm not seeing anything else come in the chat box. Okay. Monitoring it. So if I can maybe continue with some more information if you'd like to. There's a couple of questions I just entered there. <laughs> uh, how do you make the on-screen keyboard larger? Unfortunately, um, it's the Android uh, basic keyboard uh, that is available on the Mac Connect. You can change the theme. Uh, with, I'm just going to show you a little example on how to change the theme, which will change the color of the keyboard. Um, but I don't think you can make it bigger. So I'm just going to go back to uh, my keyboard. And what you want to do is, yep. Yeah. So it's um, what I just did here. When I go into my editing mode, I have my keyboard that just pops up. There is a comma right beside the space bar. If you press and hold on that, there's the settings uh, icon that's going to pop up. Just release the button and you'll be brought to all kinds of different uh, settings for your keyboard. One of them is a theme. So I know that you can change the theme. So for example, you can go for a darker color with uh, brighter keys. So uh, something like a, uh, a white on black. And uh, let's see if we can make it bigger. I don't think there is a No, there, is a, there isn't a way of putting those letters bigger, but there is a way of, like I just showed you, changing the colors to get a more, a better contrast, uh, which I did not do here. Let's, let's change the theme, because I know a lot of people like better the uh, white on black keyboard. So it, it, ha it adds some uh, more contrast uh, when using the keyboard. A better solution would be to use a a physical Bluetooth keyboard, uh, kind of like this one here, which has uh, bigger letters. And by connecting it through Bluetooth, you have all the options uh, uh, that the virtual keyboard has. This, is, this one has been designed for the Connect 12 and also the Mat Connect. Uh, but basically you have uh, native uh, functions. Uh, you can start the magnifier using the F6 function. The F5 is the settings function. So you can go into automatic to the settings. You can start reading a document by pressing the F8. You can go back home to the main carousel by pressing the home button, et cetera. So you, this is kind of like a, a remote control for your Mac Connect. So that would be my best recommendation if uh, the keyboard on the screen. And keep in mind, there's not a lot of screen real estate and it's already taking half of the screen here with the keyboard. So a better solution would be a physical uh, Bluetooth keyboard. I saw a couple of other questions besides that one. I'm scrolling as well just to uh, circle back to see what may have been overlooked. Okay, so no, I think we uh, responded to everything. Maybe if I, I can just uh, show you one little nice feature that can be very useful for a student in a classroom environment is uh, one of the uh, biggest question or concern is switching between applications. And I forgot to mention this. Uh, um, I'm hoping that in the next version there, there will be, right now the, the engineers are working on, uh, on this actually. Uh, is a way to switch between any application that uh, is running, for example, on the tablet. So for example, switching from Chrome to Prodigy very quickly. So there's gonna be kind of like a quick gesture. I, one thing that we have right now on the released version is a quick way of going between distance 
application. So right now you're seeing my distance application with my distance camera. And then uh, we can switch very quickly to my magnifier application by doing a swipe from uh, left to right. So if I do this very quickly, it's gonna switch to my uh, magnifier application. And then the same gesture to go back to the distance application. So you have that full screen when you do that. So it's very switch, uh, switch very quickly between the two applications can be very helpful when following the teacher in the front and you need that screen real estate that could be a nice feature to switch back and forth. Um, Eric, did you review what is going to be new on? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did at the beginning at the, of the webinar, we did uh, mention what's gonna be new on Prodigy 4.4. Let me talk about a bit about, about it again. Um, it's gonna be released in October. Uh, we don't have an official date yet, uh, but uh, the guys are working hard to get it as quickly as possible. Again, that's gonna be a free update and Prodigy 4.4 uh, will have uh, access to new libraries. So not only Bookshare, but I'm thinking here of that person in Canada that, that is uh, attending this webinar, you'll have access to your Sela library, which is the same as Bookshare uh, in, in Canada. So you'll have access to that library. Uh, if there is audio books, you'll have access to those also as uh, also textbooks and also other libraries in Europe. If, if, if a Swedish library or a person using it in Sweden would like to connect, that's gonna be available for them. Uh, there'll be also a feature, a self-viewing uh, capability feature. There will, it will also be a feature to disable the OCR or the character recognition when taking captures. Example, we just did for the math example, you can turn off uh, the OCR for that math example where the OCR is not that great. It's not, it's not good for math but that, that could be a great option for, for that. And also one last thing that I just mentioned is a quick toggle between, between uh, applications. Yes, sure, I can switch uh, between screens. So I'm in my distance. Uh, actually, what you wanna do is you wanna turn on your, cam your distance camera, go into distance application, and then once you see this, um, this interface, you, you're in distance application. What you do, you take one finger and do a swipe from left to right. You don't have to be quick. Just a normal pace from left to right. And that will switch from one to the other. And you have that nice real estate. You're using the full screen. Instead of using that, uh, the split screen that I showed you, this can be used to go from one application to the other. And again, this webinar will be uh, is rec being recorded and you can uh, refer back to it. I think there's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of things that we did that we went yeah. through and I hope that you guys <clears throat> practice and, uh, and, and uh, with me and I hope that, that helps a lot. This is great. I think that uh, we have managed the chat box with questions and definitely are receiving feedback that the information has been really helpful. Screenshots are being taken of, of the things that you have demonstrated as well. And just as a reminder, we know that the links that were put into the chat for all the handouts that were used in the demonstration today, there was a lot of things in the chat box. If you're not able to extract those through copy and paste, know as well that those links are in the email that would have been that you received uh, confirming that you were signed up for this uh, webinar and also received those reminders. So we are thankful for all of you being able to participate and stay with us today and we're ready to listen and learn.